Hello students, welcome to the course of Data Communication and Networks. I am Dr. Munir Omar. Today in our lecture, we will study about the error correction. In the last lecture, we studied about the error detection. So now we will look into this topic. The main objectives of this is to know about the methods for error correction or the approaches which are used for error correction and we will also study about the classifications of the algorithms used for error correction then we will learn about the Hamming code and understand the procedure of code word generation by using the Hamming code algorithm so we will have one example for Hamming code and we will process that example by using the steps of having code algorithm. So these are the contents for our today's lecture. First, we will revise the error and the types of error, then error detection, the methods for error detection. We will have a quick look about uh, these previous topics and after that, uh, we will start the error correction, the methods for error correction, and also the classification of algorithms used for error correction actually there are many algorithms we, we will give only the classes of these algorithms and after that we will have Hamming code and we will study this Hamming code in detail with an example now we are going to have a quick revision of error detection which we studied in our previous lecture First error, it is obvious that the transmission medium is not perfect. So whenever we transmit data, uh, that data may get scrambled or may have some sort of uh, interaction with noise. So there, there might be some impairments. So the data might be get corrupted, which has been transmitted by the sender. And after receiving it, the data might be different from the uh, sent. So that, that thing is referred to as an error. For reliable communication, errors must be detected and corrected. So this is obvious and this is the need of uh, communication systems to get the corrected data before the processing of data. So these are performed, uh, the, the error detection and correction are performed at data link layer and transport layer. Data can be corrupted during transmission and most of applications require that errors be detected and corrected. Two types of errors, single bit error and burst error. Uh, in single bit error, we, we say that there is only one bit which has been changed or which has been corrupted and that is uh, different at both the sides, the sender side and the receiver side. So this is known as single bit error. Uh, only one bit at any place is changed. So then we have burst error. Burst error means that there are more than one bits and these are not consecutive and the length of uh, burst error is measured as the starting bit and the ending bit. More than one bits then may not consecutive and the third thing is the length should be measured from starting corrupted bit until the last corrupted. So this is the length of this error. Then error detection. Error detection codes are used. These are actually some additional data which is attached with the original data and this additional data is used to help us detect the error in the original data. So this slide shows the concept of encoder and decoder. Actually we need uh, redundant bits or some additional bits to be attached to the message. So for the generation of these redundant bits we use a generator and that generator is applied on the message. At receiving it the same procedure is applied and here the checker is used instead of generator and this checker uses the same algorithm or the same method adopted by this generator to verify the status of data whether it is correct or not uh, whether it is uh, according to the sent data or not so we need uh, redundant data the simplest way is to send two copies of data but that 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 thing would uh, double the transmission time and also the computation time will be slower as compared to normal case so we can add some additional information with the message to help the receiver detect the errors in the data shorter group of bits may be added with to each packet these uh, bits these additional bits are used by the receiving device to detect whether there is any er error or not and once uh, the process is done these additional bits are discarded by the receiver so here we have data some additional bits are generated by a function and these bits are appended with the actual data and sent so with the help of these bits the receiver 
check uh, the status of the received bids and decide whether to accept or to reject. There are four types of redundancy checks. The first one is uh, VRC, second one is LRC, then CRC and checksum. For VRC, CRC, we use parity bit. Parity bit is an additional bit to be attached with the data to make the number of ones either even or odd. So if we need uh, even parity and most of the systems even parity is needed so for that purpose one additional bit is add, added with the original data and the value of that bit is decided by the number of ones in the data now here we have one two three four five we have five ones so this is odd number of ones so we must make it even by providing the parity bit equal to one so now here in this entire block we have even number of ones so this is even parity Error correction. The simplest way for error correction is to inform the sender about the status of transmitted packets, about the detected error and ask to retransmit the data. So if the error is detected in the received packet, then the sender can be informed about the detected error and can be requested to retransmit re that data. Uh, this is very useful method and very common in most of the in the data communication systems. But somehow it is costly because if uh, the medium is highly prone to potential errors, then such type of requests for retransmission would be very high and the bandwidth will be lost on the retransmission of data. Then the best way to detect the error and then correct it at the receiver's end without acknowledging or informing the sender. The sender forwards the error correction code to the receiver along with the data. It is just like error detection as we saw that with data some additional bits were sent for the detection of errors so in the same manner for error correction some additional bits or additional data is appended with the original data and transmitted towards the receiver the receiver uses that appended data or the additional data or the code to automatically detect and correct the error this type of error correction is more sophisticated than error detection and also this procedure is more sophisticated than asking the sender for retransmission of data. To correct the error in data frame, the receiver must know exactly which bit in the frame is corrupt. To locate the bit in error, Redundant bits are used as parity bits for error detection. So before correction of bits, it is essential to know the corrupted bits and for detection of corrupted bits, parity bits are used. There are two approaches for error correction. The first one is backward error correction and the second one is forward error correction. So we will we will discuss these two now in the coming slides. Backward error correction. This is the first approach we saw here. This approach is also known automatic repeat request ARR. The receiver device sends a request to the source device to resend the data. After detecting the error or errors in the received data. More often used because it requires less bandwidth. But remember, if there are less chances of error, then it would require less bandwidth. But if the chances are higher, then it would require more bandwidth. A return channel is needed for backward error correction. So there must be some sort of mechanism so that the receiver also send the information about the received data to the sender. So for that purpose the backward channel 
is also required. There are two ways for backward error correction. The first one is positive acknowledgement and the second one is negative acknowledgement. In positive acknowledgement, the receiver returns confirmation of each block received correctly. The transmitter resends the block if that is not acknowledged. We have already studied about the acknowledgement which is performed by TCP at transpose layer. Then we have negative acknowledgement. The receiver returns a request to retransmit only the data with error. So if the receiver detects an error, then it informs the sender. Otherwise, for correct data, no acknowledgement is sent or the sender is not informed about the correctness of received data. Then we have forward error correction. This technique allows the receiver to detect and correct errors without asking the sender for retransmission. The correction is made at the receiver's end and for the correction there is no involvement of sender. However, the sender adds some additional data with the original data before the transmission and that additional data is used for detection and correction. The bandwidth requirement is higher but return channel is not needed. If there is less potential, if there is less chances of error or the medium is not uh, at the worst condition then the bandwidth requirement would be uh, higher as compared to the backward error correction but the return channel for acknowledgement or for the information about the delivery would not be needed for the receiver. Redundant data sent by transmitter is also called error correction code. The additional data which is appended with the original data, that, that data as we know is uh, called redundant data but for error correction we call that data error correction code. In the process of error correction some predetermined procedures are adopted by the sender and receiver and this predetermined procedure is used to design the redundant bits to design or calculate these redundant bits and these redundant bits are added to the transmitted information or the information which has been transmitted from sender to receiver. Each single bit in uh, these redundant bits will have some importance and that single bit may have a function of many parts of the original data means that suppose we are adding four bits with the original data so one single bit may affect multiple bits in the original data so backward error correction the correction by retransmission of data. When the receiver detects an error in the data received, it requests back the sender to retransmit the data unit. Forward error correction. Correction at the receiving end without retransmission of data from the sender. When the receiver detects some error in the data received it executes error correcting code which helps it to auto recover and to correct some kinds of errors there are two main categories for the error correction algorithms these are block coding and convolutional coding in block coding we have an example that is hamming code and for convolution Convolutional coding, we have a Turby algorithm. Block coding works on fixed sized packets of bits. 
like 8 bits, 16 bits, 13 bits, 11 bits. So there would be a fixed size, a fixed number of bits in a block for block coding. In the convolutional coding, there is no fixed size blocks. The sizes may vary from time to time or from, from different senders. The message comprises of data streams of arbitrary length and a sequence of output bits are generated by the sliding application of boolean functions to the data stream. So in this mechanism, the algorithm deals with a stream of bits and that stream would have an arbitrary length of bits or variable length or random length of bits and the sliding application generates the error correction codes continuously. Now let's start the Hamming code. In Hamming code we provide some additional bits. These bits are known as parity bits and we specify some particular places for the parity or the redundant bits in the block and with the help of these bits we detect and correct the errors in the transmitted or the received data at the receiving end. So if we look into this block here we have four bits received and with these four bits we have three return redundant bits or parity bits. So with the help of these three bits we, we can judge the status of these four data bits and if there exist in, in any if there exists any error then that error can be corrected with the help of these bits Hamming code is a linear error correct correcting code named after its uh, inventor Richard Hamming Hamming codes can detect up to two bit errors and correct single bit errors. We will see that how the detection and correction take place uh, by, by having an example. This method of error correction is best suited for situations in which randomly occurring errors are likely, not for errors that come in burst. Hamming code can be applied to any length of data to find and correct errors. So for each length we will have a particular number of redundant bits. It doesn't mean that for all lengths there would be a single set of additional bits. So these are the steps for calculating the Hamming code. Step number one, calculation of the number of redundant bits. So we must calculate the number of parity bits for the given data bits. Number two, positioning the redundant bits. So where these redundant bits should be placed in the data which is provided. Number three, the step number three, calculating the values of each redundant bit. Then what should be the value of parity bit or redundant bit which is placed in the data bits, in between the data bits. I'm quickly clarifying these three steps with an example. So the first step is to know the number of redundant bits. So how many parity bits are required if we have, let's say we have four bits provided. So for this we will calculate and we will get three. And if there are five bits then these redundant bits would not be three, it would be four. Let's say for eight bits it would be different. So we will know the number of redundant bits in the first step. Then the second step is about the placement. So where these bits should be placed. So we are placing these bits at number one, at number two and at number four if we have four data bits. 
Then the third step is that what would be the values of these three bits here? We would have some value like here we have some values given. So for these redundant bits R1, R2 and R3 what would we should give either 0 or 1 to adjust the parity values according to our requirement. So now we are starting with step number 1 in details. Uh, if the message contains m number of bits, the data bits and r number of redundant bits are added. The m can be 4, 5, 6, 8, 16, 32, any number of data bits. So we must add some additional bits 